Hello and welcome to Ticket Manager's All Access Interview Series, engaging leaders from across the sports marketing spectrum to identify and explore critical issues in the business of sports, entertainment, sponsorship, activation, ticketing, hospitality, and even more. I'm your host, Jim Andrews. Joining me on this episode is Chris Bontempo, Chief Marketing Officer of IBM Americas, where he leads all aspects of marketing for IBM across the US, Canada, and Latin America with direct responsibility for marketing sourced revenue, and we're gonna talk about that in a bit, demand generation and geography marketing professionals. Chris, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Jim, thanks for having me. Very happy to be here. Awesome. I'd like to start with a couple of questions that I typically pose to people in, in your position, to, to CMOs. And the first would be to ask you to describe specifically your role at IBM. I gave kind of those general par parameters. Because I find that you know, the responsibilities of the CMO, you know, similar from company to company, but there's also some, uh, usually some specific differences. And I know from talking to you earlier, your approach and kind of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis is somewhat different than, than maybe a lot of other CMOs that we might uh, be familiar with. Every CMO role, when I talk to my peers, every CMO role is different. We all support different businesses. We've got different stakeholders that we need to address and, and keep happy. And so every CMO, we have a different approach, but we can all learn from each other, which is why having these kind of things where we can share insights and learn from uh, our peers is great. IB, I'll start with IBM first, right? So, so what is the environment and context in which I'm the CMO for IBM in the Americas? So it, IBM has been around 112 years. But we're constantly transforming and changing. And right now, I would say, is a super exciting time to be part of IBM. And it's because we've gone from, I've been at IBM 18 years. The first 16 years of those, I think the company, it's fair to say, struggled to grow at GDP. Hmm. Over the last two years, what we've seen as we've transformed this business is that we've become a high growth software systems and consulting company. And so as a marketing professional, that's a different vibe, a different motion than maybe what most of our IBM marketers were used to for the first 16 years that I was here and probably several years before that. For me right now, the imperative as CMO of the Americas is to drive, help the business deliver high single digit revenue growth for the company across those, those services. And uh, to do that, right, you need a mix of marketing communications tactics from top to bottom of the funnel that are tightly interlocked with your sales and business partner friends who are going to actually deliver the revenue at the end of the day. So, you know, we have a mix of tactics from digital to, you know, paid to social, into events, into sponsorships, and that whole mix has to come together to deliver an outcome for the business. And that outcome is a shared outcome that we deliver with sales and our ecosystem partners. Um, so my role really is to help make sure we have the right demand gen plan in place, make sure we're delivering high quality pipeline into the business, and then make sure that we have all the tactics in place so that the average seller can go out there, know they've got a place to meet a customer, progress a deal and turn it into a win. So yeah, and that does you know, kind of anticipate what I was going to ask you next, which is just where do the kind of the sponsorships, the sports and entertainment partnerships fit in that mix? So I, I, I think you, you, know, you answered that in part. And, and I also wanted to, to ask you, you, we talk about sports and entertainment, we talk about client entertainment and hospitality and that, that being an element of it. And I know that's something that, that you do in your role is, is spend a lot of time with, with customers or prospective customers. Uh, so you get to see some of these, uh, these things up close and personal, as it were. Uh, you know, I always know what makes you special, right? So, so for me, what makes me unique is I'm probably the most client-facing marketer that we have at IBM. Mm. And you know, the hard fought, right? To do that, you have to understand the technical capabilities of the products that we're trying to talk about, understand the messaging, and then be super comfortable getting out into the market and talking to clients about their problems, their challenges, and how technology can solve them. And, and hopefully IBM has a solution uh, that can go do that. In order to, to bring us into the realm of sports, like, you need to get at bats, 
right? <laughs> yeah. How do you get at bats? You do that through experiential marketing and selling. And, you know, those, every CMO will tell you, you need a robust marketing mix across all the different types of tactics. And a big part of that is experiences and events frequently done through sponsorships that give you the time and the, the access and the time with clients to talk with them about, you know, what's important to them. And so a big part of my job, and I think what makes me unique is I love spending time with customers. I love getting out into the field. I love bringing the IBM point of view to them, but also listening to what their challenges are and then helping them, helping identify together what is the product offering capability, solution, technology, process change sometimes. Sometimes it's a people question that you know we can help them solve. And that to me, that's exciting. So when I think about that, like where am I going to get the at bats? It's events that we might own and run ourselves at IBM. It may be third party events that a third party runs and we are a sponsor, whether it's a sole sponsorship or a multi vendor event. And then there's this whole realm of activities, sponsorships, engagements that you can run where you're just getting time with a client with a shared interest around something. And that's where really sports and entertainment sponsorships come in for me. I think with IBM, you know, one of the like, most of the people that are that are listening to us or watching us right now could probably tick off the list of, of the major sponsorships, right? Very familiar partnerships with the U.S. Open and tennis, Masters Golf, uh, Wimbledon, the Grammy Awards, you know, and, and th- those are just some of the big tentpole partnerships. And I think that's interesting because, as you mentioned. This has been a time of tremendous change, transformation at the company. And, you know, when, when I think of it in that context, I'm like, well, would you have at all have been tempted to say, you know what, we're going to need to reintroduce ourselves as you know, the, the new IBM, if I can use that phrase. And maybe that means new partnerships, but instead you, you've been able to do that by relying on these kind of legacy sponsorships. And we were talking you know, a quarter of a century <laughs> with, with the Masters and with the U.S. Open and things like that. So, so can you tell me a little bit about uh, kind of how that has, has worked for you? Yeah, so, so you hit on a number of really interesting points in there, Jim. So, so first of all, we absolutely, last year in 2022, we had to reintroduce IBM to the world because we were on this transformation journey. We knew the capabilities that we had at the company and what we were doing with clients. But I think the world wasn't familiar with the new IBM. It was really striking how many times you'd start talking to a client and they would say, you know, Chris, this sounds interesting, but I really don't know what IBM does anymore. And for a company that's been around for 112 years and has a very strong brand like us, and I'm the marketing person, right? So once I pick myself up off the floor, um, you know, I, we, we all realize we have to bring, you know, the story of IBM, the new IBM out into the market. And so in January of last year, actually right around this time last year, we launched a new brand campaign called Let's Create. Uh, and IBM, we launch new brand campaigns every 10, 15 years, right? So this was a big deal. Sure. And what Let's Create let us do is just reintroduce IBM to the world with the new capabilities we've developed and built around software consulting systems, but told really through this lens of co-creation with our clients. So what are we doing with our clients out in the world to make the world work better. We, we reestablish the mission of the IBM, or which is to be the catalyst that makes the world work better. Okay, so you, you put those things together, you've got a new brand campaign, a new mission for the IBM or catalyst. I'm not a chemistry major, nobody would ever mistake me for that. <laughs> but a catalyst is, you know, a compound or a substance you insert into, you know, a mix to make thing to accelerate change to make things, you know, work faster. And that's exactly what we think. So when you think about that, that's us plus our clients, plus our partners, putting technology into the mix to get better outcomes. And that was the crux of the brand campaign. And so all of last year was really about reintroducing IBM to the world. When you think about how to do that, 
in the context of some things stay the same, some things have to change. The sponsorships we've had, right? You, you named the, the big ones. The US Open, 30 years of sponsorship. We just uh, re-upped for another five years with the USTA as a strategic partner for us last year. Masters is 25 plus years. I think this will be the 27th year of the partnership with the Masters. Wimbledon since 1990. So 30, this will be our 33rd year of the Wimbledon partnership. I think if you asked a fan of any of those events, experiences, organizations, they would say that there is something timeless about the experience of Wimbledon, US Open, Masters, but that at the same time, the fan experience has evolved significantly and been transformed for a digital era. Mm -hmm. And that's been frequently actually in partnership with IBM consulting and our technology groups. Uh, but the point is competition, sports, will always be there. It's, you know, it's timeless. We from, you know, millennia, we've had competition in uh, culture. At the same time, things always, you have to transform, adapt and change. And we've helped those organizations, you know, hand in hand, let's create, co-created different fan experiences so that the masters of today is not the masters that my dad watched or that my grandfather watched, right? And the US Open has completely changed their fan experience over the years. Indeed. So it fits really well with the IBM narrative, those, those kinds of sponsorships. The application of technology to transform a business while keeping the heart of the business the same. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And, and I, you know, we, again, we are all you know, familiar with some of those, uh, the technology that you provided and, and the applications, especially the, the, the fan facing, the consumer facing apps and, 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 uh, and, and other things. And I'm just wondering, I'm, I'm assuming that the ability to have that kind of a, a showcase for your technology, I mean, you could you you have lots of, of clients and customers, you know, who could be test cases or case studies or, or what have you. But I'm imagining that, you know, nothing kind of beats the ability to uh, use something that is so familiar as Wimbledon, the U.S. Open, the Masters, something like that. Is that, maybe that's an obvious point to make, but I wanted to ask that. It's not an obvious point, actually. So, so people don't naturally equate running uh, the U.S. Open experience and all the technology and infrastructure that happens there to business. But mm -hmm. we make that connection for it. This is one of the main reasons we do the sponsorship is we take something accessible like the U.S. Open, the tennis experience, and then we talk to our clients there about how what we're doing to support the U.S. Open mm -hmm. and how that would actually apply to their businesses. And when the light bulb goes off, when you're taking them down into the bowels of Arthur Ashe and showing them the IBM data center and the analytics that are happening that are then getting fed out to you know ESPN and out into the USTA website, the, the light bulb goes on. They're like, oh, I, I, I get it. I understand now how this could work for me. Yeah. And I'll give you an example. So the USTA for 50 weeks of the year is just your kind of average, small, medium-sized business that's just chugging along. They get, you know, really steady state hits on the website. You know, they issue some press releases. There's, it's, it's a very sleepy kind of organization. They have the mission of supporting tennis in, in the U.S. and that stuff's always going on. Sure. But then for the U.S. Open, they have a massive scalability challenge. Yeah. For two weeks of the year, they are the center of the tennis and some might say the sporting universe. Right. And so the, you know, the, the traffic on the website goes up by, you know, infinite percentage. The, you know, you go from having a thousand clicks on the site per day to millions of clicks on the site per day. And those clicks are all to different aspects of information of in, in parts of the fan experience. So it's like real-time analytics, a lot of vid video intents. What we do for the USTA is, you know, the IBM technology, the IBM cloud, IBM AI, IBM security provides all of that infrastructure at massive scale that we turn on 
you know, on the Sunday before the open starts and we turn it off on the Monday after the open ends and we scale everything back down. That elasticity, flexibility. Well, there's no difference between that and, you know, a retailer on Black Friday. Right. <laughs> so, you yeah. know, all of a sudden you've got a massive influx of traffic. You need to scale up immediately. You need to run, you know, and, and not lose any transactions while you're doing it. You need to be able to show, you know, all the content you need to uh, get a sale going. You need to do that instantly, securely, with the right recommendation engine behind everything. So when you make that connection at the open to the client, the retail client, they get it and they understand that you can deliver that. And that is immensely valuable to us here at IBM because it's an accessible, it's accessible because it's sports and we make it relevant to them when we can go a couple inches deep on the technology side of, of how, how this all comes to life. Clearly, that, that that's a great case for why you have uh, stuck with those organizations. I don't think anybody would question that. But at the same time, you also, it's not like you've only done the things that you've been doing for 25, 30 years. You have introduced some some new partnerships, such as your relationship with uh, ESPN Fantasy Football. You've also gone beyond sports uh, partnerships. And so I'd love to hear about uh, the reasons why you've uh, gone in some of those uh, different directions recently. You know, you, you have to change with the times and in order to stay relevant, you have to add different things into the the mix here. Fantasy football is a great example. So we partner with ESPN uh, and I have to admit, I am a fantasy football junkie, right? So uh, I love this partnership. With ESPN Fantasy, they're the largest fantasy football platform available and they have millions and millions of players. And those players are all looking for you know, real-time analytics on individual players. They're looking for help uh, with trade recommendations, draft recommendations, you know, week to week, who's going to boom, who's going to bust. So it is a massive kind of data integration and analytics uh, challenge that they face. So it is an amazing showcase for IBM and an obvious natural partnership for us to have pursued. And it's also fun. Like fantasy football is fun. So right. you get an element of fun. You get cool analytics on massive data sets and used by millions of uh, people across the country. It is a great showcase for the IBM technology and shows how we can work with anybody to on their particular business challenge and come up with an analytics and data-based solution. I think the world is diversifying and the U.S. is diversifying and that mix of chain of, uh, you know, sports is always changing. You know, we're definitely going to, we're seeing the rise of Formula One here now in the U.S. We're seeing, especially with the World Cup in Qatar and now coming to the U.S., Canada and Mexico in the next cycle. Soccer is on the rise, right? Like I've got three kids, so my kids all play, grew up playing soccer. It's going to be the next big sport here. At the same time, football and the NFL is not going anywhere. Basketball is still, you know, inc incredibly exciting. The NHL. So we're, the mix will change. New sports will come in. And, and, you know, if we want to stay relevant, we have to keep including these things. And we have to diversify, frankly, beyond sports. We do a big uh, partnership on Broadway. Right. We're a New York company. So, of course, yeah. Broadway is a big deal for us. Um, and we support sponsorships of uh, Broadway programming. Not everybody wants to go, you know, watch tennis or golf or football or, you know, there's a lot of other stuff out there. I think we're we're just on the at the start of that, to be honest, on on bringing in new experiences like we've been looking at culinary or cooking partnerships to go to, right? That'd be really interesting. And I'm a, I'm Italian. So of course uh, it's right in my sweet spot, but I think, Absolutely. you know, there's a whole range of things that people are passionate about and are interested in that, you know, there are sponsorship opportunities that we just have to explore. Yeah. No, and that, and that's so important. We just had a conversation with another guest from from Mastercard who was talking about that. You know, identifying all of those different uh, passion points, and they're they're big into culinary for that that same reason. And and of course, you know, they have a, you know that broad consumer base of people that they're reaching. And even though your B two B target audience is is much more narrow, 
it's diversifying just like the rest of uh, you know all, all of us are right so so it's it's uh, you've got to make sure that you've got the right mix to to talk to these folks that are maybe weren't uh, kind of in the customer profile before but they sure are now yeah what well, Jim what's interesting about the B2B buyer is that there's no B2B buyer there mm-hmm. are B2B buyer committees right? The average B2B tech sale takes, has a, the committee size who's in, has some role in the purchase is 13. Wow. So we have a whole range of personalities, people and roles that we need to engage with and address in order to, you know, build support for a technology buy. And Look, at the end of the day, 13 people are 13 people with different varied interests. They're, you know, all different genders, you know, they come from everywhere, very diverse group. And uh, it's incumbent on us to, if we want to build relationships with them, we have to meet them where they are with the interest that they have rather than trying to impose our interests on them. Like there's some of those people I'm never going to get to attend the US Open with me, right? right? They're just not, they're not interested, but they may be interested in something else. And, you know, I, as a, you know, good seller and marketer, I'm happy to go do that. If they're gonna, if that's gonna be what engages them, then let's go there. You know, talking about that, that sale and those buying committees leads me right into the next question. But before I ask that, I just have to say, I don't think I would ever join a fantasy football league that you were in because I would think that you have some kind of secret access to to Watson data or something. I'd be like, no, 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 I could never, I could never beat this guy. <laughs> having having just won the IBM data and AI fantasy football <laughs> league for the year, I am not going to comment on that. <laughs> well, that's a, it's as long as it's all IBM people in that league, then it, then it's okay, right? I would just feel as an outsider, be like, I'm not competing with these guys. <laughs> So we talk about that the tech sale and 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 you know the kind of ecosystem that goes on around that. So that to me, I'm relating that to how then do you account for sponsorships role? And so I guess the broader question is how do you at IBM look at determining how these partnerships are performing? You know, are, are you looking at return on objectives and things kind of at the the top of the funnel, if you will, or you know, can you drill down into return on uh, in, investment? Given that there are so many components to those B two B sales, can is it possible to isolate the impact that sponsorship has? So, just talk to me a little bit about your kind of approach to to performance evaluation for these partnerships. Yeah, most CMOs, Jim, would say that marketing metrics and measurement is a mixture of art and science. Absolutely. At the end of the day, we're accountable to the business for certain results and need to meet objectives. And those objectives are usually in the form of pipeline of opportunities and deals. And then ultimately how many of those deals ended up as closed, what we call win revenue, right? New, new wins for the company. And I it will not shock anybody that we very rigorously track uh, and measure all of that stuff here at IBM. And we have figured out ways to measure, you know, sponsorship, you know, based on the attendee that, you know, was at the event or participated in the the sponsored event, their company, their role. And so we track these things in, you know, mark what we call marketing source. I don't love that uh, market. uh, Actually, now we call it marketing contributed revenue. Mm. Okay. So you know, there's a whole lot of activity that goes into opening an opportunity and closing an opportunity. And a lot of it happens by the, you know, the seller, the business partner, sure. working the relationship, getting the right proposal with the right pricing, with the right buyer committee behind it. And marketing has a part to play in that. I'm never going to be the one who says, oh, marketing generated that opportunity for you because There's a lot that goes into it. Absolutely. But but we track this stuff so that I can show when we, you know, when we get a decision maker to the US Open in into the IBM suite and we spend three hours with them, four hours watching tennis, showcasing the IBM technology, putting them on the IBM tech tour down in Arthur Ashe. I can connect that person, you know, with a deal sitting in Salesforce. And then I'll track whether or not that, how that deal progressed and and ultimately closed. 
that's the nuts and bolts of it. And I have to be able to show that for every sponsorship activity that we do. Now, at the same time, you're absolutely right that there's umbrella awareness that you need to build in the market. So they, so they even know, to my point earlier about reintroducing IBM. So they even know who IBM is right. and, and what we do. And you, know, you get a level of that awareness and consideration bump by doing the sponsorships. And we, we do track that as well. If you can't track it really at an individual or account basis, Right. But you do track it at the overall level. And I tell you, every year we see a bump in awareness of IBM solutions around Masters in the spring, Wimbledon in the early summer, US Open in the late summer, the NFL advertising we do, right? You see these bumps and spikes in awareness and consideration. And I just, I think that you're the vernacular marketing contributed versus marketing generated. I know a lot of people in sales that I know would, would applaud that and, and say that that's a, that is a really smart way to look at it. And, you know, accounting for the fact that, as you said, you know, lots, lots of people are responsible for that, uh, that ultimate win. Right. Yeah. If you ever want to get in trouble with a salesperson, just say marketing <laughs> generated and, uh, and then duh. And then duh. Hey, Chris, before I let you go, I, I'd like to make sure that the viewers and listeners have an understanding uh, of the structure that kind of supports sports and entertainment partnerships at IBM. So just a little bit of the nuts and bolts. So if you can tell us a little about the team that oversees kind of the global partnerships and the big uh, things that we've been talking about on the corporate level, what they're responsible for. And also, how does IBM approach kind of local sponsorships? Where, where would those come from and how does, how does that work? It's a great way to close. Like we we engage in spart, uh, sports sponsorships and partnerships at all levels, and so we have at the highest level the big corporate level sponsorships. Like we talked about the Open, Masters, Wimbledon. That's run out of the what we call the CHQ or the corporate headquarters team. Noah Syken runs that for us. He's sure. uh, amazing. He's been doing it for years. He's the best in the business. Um, and you, you know, for those sponsorships, what we're looking for is, you know, a brand, a great brand name, and more importantly, a technology relationship that we can develop. So it's a two-way street, right? How can we engage with you as a organization and a business so that you leverage and use IBM technologies and consulting services to do something unique out in the market that we can then showcase with our other clients so they can see exam like accessible examples of this. And uh, no and team are always kicking the tires on new sponsorships to go because everybody has, in this technology-driven, digitally transformed world, everybody has something that they can get done. And it's just a question of fit. Now, underneath NOAA, where I am in, in the Americas and the geography, my goal is to get at-bats for my sellers and my marketing field marketing team and my business partners with clients and meet them where they are. Mm. Clients operate, live, are in communities, local communities. Right. Those local communities have organizations. Some of them are sport, you know, sports teams where people are passionate about. It might be other parts of the community that they're passionate about, like in New York Broadway, right? We have all sorts of, you know, we have season ticket relationships mm -hmm. with sports teams uh, across the country. We have a, a U.S. partnership with the PGA for access to golf tournaments across the country. We have the Broadway sponsor, and that's for touring Broadway as well as, as they go on the road. And every year I run an NFL suites program so that, you know, for Monday and Thursday night football, if, you know, you're, if, if that's available in the city, there will be probably an IBM suite so that my sellers can invite their customers, watch some football, hear about IBM technology and what we're doing. And then, you know, there's ad hoc stuff that comes up all the time. And that's managed at the Americas level through, through me and my team. And then I also have Canada and Latin America. We have a big partnership with Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment up in Toronto, mm -hmm. right around the, um, the Leafs and the, and the Raptors, right? Mm -hmm. So every, we have some local variability too in, in each of the countries. So it's pretty exciting. There's a lot going on. Sometimes it's hard for me to keep track of everything, but I've got a great team who manages this and leaves this for us and is always 
bringing new possibilities into the fold as uh, as our client needs change and as we bring you know different people into uh, into the uh, the envelope here. Chris, I, I can't thank you enough for for taking some time and really kind of walking us through all these different elements of uh, IBM's approach to sponsorship. And I think it's been uh, it's been educational for me. I'm sure it's been for our, our listeners as well. So just thanks again for for your time and and wish you the the best of luck with everything that you've got uh, going on uh, this year. No, oh, thanks, Jim. Thanks for having me. Thanks to uh, Ticket Manager for sponsoring this. I will say you didn't ask me where we're going, Jim, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and one Forgive thing, me, please tell me where you're going. I'd love to know. One thing I will add, because it builds on the return on investment uh, question is, you know, one of the things that we're looking at is, you know, how do I show the return and keep track of things uh, at the individual ticket level? And uh, so we are kicking off something with Ticket Manager um, that I'm pretty excited about to see uh, where we can take it and show the business the return on investment of an individual ticket investment that we might make or the season tickets that we've got. All that stuff, like we're always in the business of trying to get more efficient mm -hmm. um, with uh, any of our investment, any of the process around getting the stuff into the hands of sellers so they can engage with their clients. And uh, we're looking at that as a pretty pretty good tool for us in the Americas. So it's uh, exciting times. More more to come on that. If, if I ever get invited back, Jim, I'll cover, cover the, uh, the results. Trust me, if, if, if that if that goes well, you'll definitely be invited back. <laughs> uh, you know, that's a story that uh, that I'd love to tell. I'm sure uh, my friends at Ticket Manager uh, definitely would love to tell that as well. So thanks for thanks for bringing that up. On behalf of everyone at Ticket Manager and myself and Chris, thank you all for watching and listening. And please join us again for the next episode in the All Access Interview Series.